Jesus himself, as a rabbi in the Hebrew tradition, would have had to have a wife. This is not, the Jewish tradition is not of celibate priests. It's of rap, they understand, if you look really into the mystical Kabbalistic traditions of the Hebrews, you will see that actually the feminine is worshipped in many ways the same as in the um, tantric or Hindu traditions as the energy of divinity. So Jesus, Yeshua, and Magdalene, who many believe was a priestess in in the um, temple, either of, you know, of the feminine, whether it was Astarte, Inanna, or Isis. It's the great goddess. And she was, many believe she was the high priestess. So that her job was actually, since the women know the, the paths, they know the purification paths, it's her job to assist the male in transcending, in in transmuting himself. Sharon Rose was kind of a discovery of a hidden gem. So I was looking for something deeper, something that was more meaningful as a woman. And this uh, search led me to India. And there I was um, initiated into a tradition of the feminine that had been alive for since at least 2000 BC, at least. And it's a tradition called Katak dance. This woman is very well trained in old temple art and she lives it. It's not just something separate from her life, it's within her. What was so beautiful about this art form was that it taught one to embody all the deities male and female, but particularly it had uh, a teaching of feminine grace, beauty, and power. The way she moves, how she speaks, what she thinks, it's, it's like having a, a temple priestess in the neighborhood. She understands the ancient arts and knows that they are meant to be transformed and brought fresh and alive into our time. She knows that. And that's who we wanted to work with. Katak is a form, it's an ancient storytelling form that embodied the dancers, musicians, they were dancer, musician, actors. They embodied all of the gods and goddesses. And this is the way the, trans, the, the religion itself, the sacred art, was transmitted to the peoples. So the Egyptians were not you know, afraid of death or the cycles of life. They were just, because they saw life itself as many, many cycles. It wasn't just this one life. It was many, many times of life, birth, death, the cycles of, like the cycles of the sun and, and the moon, death and birth, rebirth, were extremely important. And they had rituals to relate with that, to, to bring the, the spirit, the soul, um, back into the realms of light. So this is what the dance is about. So there's this, this um, light pouring down. Um, and the dance begins with this, you'll see the royal couple, the tantric couple, because they are male and female representing the two aspects of the union. They begin by breathing. So there's this purification of the air and the dancers are stretching and breathing and the, the um, Ra and Magdalene are showing the nature of the male and female energy field. Then it moves into the washing, the ritual washing of the outer form of the body. Then it moves to once that it's the arising of the inner fire of the Kundalini energy and the opening of the third eye. Once the third eye opens then you're able to perceive the divine light of God. And then that light pours through you. There's a whole section with all of this fire of the sun. And that's this, and this is very, very much in, well, actually you could say in the way back into the Aryan tradition, in the Zoroastrian tradition, it's this um, 
fire, the worship of light and fire as a way of totally purifying your body. So in this, in this dance, it's the Magdalene who is going through this initiation to prepare her for her role. You'll see at the end of the fire purification, she is presented with the alabaster jar. And the alabaster jar is what she's going to use to, of course, anoint Yeshua for his journey. And it's also related to the sacred tradition of the priestess, the high priestess, um, initiating the male. And then once she's given that, the rest of the dance, the fast part of the dance, is all about the journey of the soul freed from the body back to light. It's the ba. It's called the ba in the Egyptian tradition. And this is, it's the bird. And so when you see all of this going on in the last part of the dance, and this joy, because it's the joy of being freed from the earthly chains and flying back into the true home of divinity. In a way, it was like building a temple, working in this theater. David and I had experiences, particularly during the temple dance, where we realized, oh, this is an invocation. Now, when you look at the dance, David and Laura Lee are, are playing the royal couple, which is very fitting because they're the producers of the play. This piece is actually an invocation. It's not only entertainment. It's really calling in profound energies because it was full of symbolic gesture and rhythm and meaning. And it was a meaning held by each of the performers. In all of the work I do, the light and the energy is pouring out from the heart. And this is a big part of the Sufi tradition, which is very important in Katak itself. So it's always the movements of the arms are coming from the heart. It's the light and energy going out to the individual, to the audience, and then being received back. So it's this constant interplay of giving and receiving and giving and receiving from the source to the audience, back from them, and so it's this constant interaction. I created it so that if you're a person that has no experience with these traditions, and you're just walking in, I wanted it to be like a kaleidoscope of color and movement and gesture. 